Welcome back to the 5-Minute Metadata video series. In this video, we're going to be discussing data dictionaries, what they are, what's stored in them, and what makes up a good one. So, the first question is, what is a data dictionary? Let's first talk about what other kind of dictionaries there are. The definition of a dictionary is a book listing and explaining the words of a language. Here, I've set up three different kinds of dictionaries. We have an English dictionary, a German dictionary, and a Scrabble dictionary. They're all dictionaries, but the context of each is completely different to the next one. You wouldn't look up a German word in the English dictionary. If a dictionary helps provide the context for words, a data dictionary tells us the context of a collection of data. Let's have a look at what this looks like in practice. Here we have some information about these three books that I have. We're going to record down the title, the publisher, and the year that the book was published. Because I'm only collecting data for a handful of books right now, there's a lot of space for me to record this information. Everything can be written out fully and it's easy to understand because it's not that much information that had to be recorded. But if you were to collect more information about these books, there isn't as much space anymore, so you would have to abbreviate some things. And this makes it harder to understand what the columns mean now. Because of this, we now have to record down somewhere what these columns mean. And this is what a data dictionary is. If a good dictionary has the word and the meaning of that word, what is a good way of recording the context of data? To start off with, you would need the name of the column so we can look it up. We would then need the definition so we would know what that column means. Some other common things you might want to record are the data type so we can interpret the information appropriately and also the size so we know how much space it takes up in the database. And maybe a list of possible values if there is a list of codes used in that field. These are the most common things you might see, but there are others that may be more appropriate for your data. Now let's look at some examples. To make sense of what I'm recording, I need to build a data dictionary. Earlier, I drew a table about my dictionaries, recording the title, publisher, year, and the number of pages. Now I'm going to build a data dictionary that records the context of these columns. First, let's start off with the title and add the definition, which is the title of the dictionary. This is a straightforward example, but now I don't have to guess what this column means. Now I'll make an entry for the publisher. The publisher is repeated and that takes time to write down because a lot of publishers have long names, like the Oxford English Dictionary. Because of this, I'm going to abbreviate the publisher's name. This makes the data faster to enter and takes up less space. Oxford English Dictionary becomes the code OED, but it isn't the only one. And I also have to record the code so it gets interpreted correctly. If you're going to use codes, you need a data dictionary to explain them. The codes are still text, but they now have a special meaning. Why is recording the number of pages important? Well, it's because I can now tell what the longest or shortest book is in my collection. Again, I don't have a lot of room to record information, so I'll use three digits to record the number of pages. But what if my book has more than 999 pages? In my data, I'll record this as 999. And in my data dictionary, I'll write this down and tell people that 999 is actually 999 or above. Now I'm going to record the year of publication. This looks like a number, but it can't be treated like one because dates aren't numbers. You can find the differences between two dates, but you can't add them together because that wouldn't make any sense. So now you know what would go into a data dictionary, but in real life, you wouldn't record them on a whiteboard. You'll find them in a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, or an XML file, and also in a metadata registry. But whenever you store data, it's important to record a data dictionary to make sure people understand the context of your data. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check us out on AristotleMetadata.com.